What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games. Okay, not really an indie game, but I'm a big fan of the Dungeon series. This is one of those weird games that the first one was, like, really bad. But all the other ones after that were pretty decent facsimiles of what you would expect from Dungeon Keeper. They've got a great sense of humor, if somewhat a little bit campy. And so I always try to check back on in whenever there's a new iteration of the Dungeon series, just because I've always liked kind of that bullfrog gameplay loop of digging out tiles, building a base, and invading the overworld. So today, we're going to see if Dungeons 4 can live up to the lofty expectations that Dungeon Keeper commands. We're going to play the game for about 30 or 35 minutes. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list. Or, after watching this video, you're like, you know what, screw that game, bro. That's also perfectly valid as well. Along the way, I'm going to do my best to give you commentary about things I see that I like, that I don't like, that you'll want to keep in mind if you're a prospective buyer. But for now, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also take a look down there if you wanted to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. Pretty solid chance I'll be streaming this game on the day the video goes live. But, remind me in Discord because I tend to forget. I say a lot of things in these videos, I play a lot of games, and my brain instantaneously wipes like 95% of what happens during these video recordings. In preparation for this thing, I already played through the first mission because I've played this game enough to know, or at least the dungeon games enough to know, that the first mission is always kind of just like storyline setup. It's not like base building or whatever. So I've gotten us to the second level so that for our first impressions, we can actually see the core of the gameplay. But let's go ahead and get moving, shall we? Now, if my voice sounds a little bit weird over the course of the next few days... From me anyway. Talia, stepsister, your deplorable deeds must not go unpunished. You have slain our foster father, Thanos, a blasphemous affront to our goddess, whom you, Mr. Warlof, have also slain. But we will have plenty of time to argue on our journey. I am here for the stone. Brynhild, if you please. You know you can, you little cutie. Oi! Who are you, lazy nut? Get that Destroyer of Worlds class hammer going! Talia had been captured. Only the bubbling around the place essence of absolute evil could save her. It was amusing to leave Talia in the clutches of her brother. But on the other hand, without her help, the shapeless evil would probably just roam the countryside as a disembodied something or other, and at best be hired for third-rate horror movies. Fortunately, a forgotten dungeon heart lying in the underground could quickly be reactivated. Together with the creatures of the Horde, it would be easy to smash the do-gooder heroes there to smithereens. So there's our dungeon heart. ...had to get rid of that dwarven contraption on the overworld, as it posed a threat to the underground, and with it, the dungeon heart. It was therefore necessary to build a mighty dungeon, or rather, to have one built, because, as a wafting essence, the disembodied evil could not do much itself. So the entire game is going to have that sense of humor that you're hearing right there. As I was saying... Uh, if my voice sounds weird over the course of the next couple days, I apologize for that. I actually went to a concert. I saw Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons in San Jose a couple nights ago. Uh, they said it was their last tour, and I've liked Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. I'm like a heavy metal guy. I mean, I listen to everything. I have gangster rap. You know, I have heavy metal. I have punk rock. I got everything on my Spotify. I've got synthwave. I've got dark wave. I've got house music. I've got everything. But I've always been a massive fan of Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. And so anyways, my wife and I went and saw him on their last tour a couple nights ago. And there was a lot of cheering, all right? There's something about a 90-year-old man that can still knock out those falsetto notes effortlessly. It's kind of, like, impressive, so my voice is a little bit raw right now. But the humor in this game persists throughout the entire title. You will f okay, Are you guys going to do that one right there? Are you guys, like, okay with doing these ones right here? Is it going to take a really, really long time here? I'll just leave it queued up. So research our dungeon to level 1. I'm going to do exactly that. So this will specify the maximum level for Talia and our little snots. We can increase this to unlock new rooms and also increase our little snot maximum. Fantastic, dude. Uh, let's see here. Evilness is stored in your vault. 
of evilness. Sure, I would love to have a vault of evilness. And then also a treasury would probably be good for putting this gold away somewhere. But it looks like I'm broke again, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to keep on going. Hopefully these guys will grab everything we need off of this side. I'll probably do something to sort of like mirror it a little bit on this side. We're not going to be able to dig out the thick stone from what I recall having played games like this before. Not enough gold. You need 500 of it. Well, at least they made it really, really visible on the world map. All right, so we have our 1,000 gold. Let's go ahead and research the treasury like they wanted me to. This is the problem with tutorials is that I never listen to them because I hate tutorials with, like, the deepest recesses of my heart. I don't know what it is about tutorials. I just I don't like them in video games. Like, I never follow them. And then inevitably, two hours on into the game, I will lose based on something that the tutorial very clearly taught me if I had not spent so much time fast traveling and clicking through it. And then I'll be like, I just don't understand why this game is so unfair. This is just terrible game design. I don't know. And I probably should have just played the tutorial and like chewed on my cheek until I got through it. I don't know. There's just something about a game tutorializing me that always makes me just kind of like automatically clunk back and fall asleep. So I usually skip through all tutorials. I like to figure things out myself, I guess. I think that's a part of it, too, is that I'm a big explorer. I like to make my own mistakes, and I like to figure things out on my own. So our treasury is done, and as you can see, our little snots are bringing our enormous piles of apparently freshly minted gold coins that we pulled out of a wall uh, to our treasury so that we've got even more cash stacked up. So our gold is all nice and stored up. I don't know exactly what they want me to do next. But we can get a gobbler farm, apparently. It produces delicious gobblers, the standard food for demons and horde creatures. They do sound delicious. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, turkey's kind of like, I don't know, dude. We're coming up on the Thanksgiving season right now. So it's like possible that I may really offend the Thanksgiving people. But honestly, I've always kind of felt like, like turkey is kind of mid compared to most like deli meats. Like, I like rotisserie chicken probably the best if I'm going for poultry. But I like beef just as much, and I like pork in there, too. I think I like everything better than turkey, basically. But turkey is also, like, fine if it's all we have. I believe that I may have figured out the problem why we're not advancing right now. I didn't make the, the treasury into a 5x5. Five five. So there it is. But the Gudra amount that could be stored in the throne room was simply not even close to enough for a proper gold. It's true, and if we can't have a golden bath, not a golden shower, look at me, chat, not a golden shower, a golden bath. Those two things are distinct. One of them is not filthy, the other is, all right? A golden bath. We've got enough coins right now that we can swim through it like Scrooge McDuck. All right, so we need a gobbler farm. How big should the gobbler farm be? A 5x5? Five five? Well, that's 5x5 five five because I made a 5x5. Five five. I'm ahead of the curve on that one. I'll probably also, like, do, like, another, I don't know, like, 6x6 six six or something over there. It seems like they want me to do, like, a barracks next so that I can get some creatures to go and, like, rescue the evil elf lady from the surface that's running this operation. Uh, so if you're wondering... We accidentally vaporized the big guy in black armor from the first couple games while playing around with an artifact, all right? That's why she's in charge now. And she promptly ran everything into the ground during the tutorial by having, like, bad advisors and generally just not caring about her job and kind of just, like, r and r when she should have been taking part in absolute evil. So far, digging animations and the characterizations of the little snots look really, really good. In fact, I'm liking them quite a bit. They swing a little bit slowly with some of the swings, but most of the animations look really good. Like, you get a cartoonish sense of them being sort of like bumbling little idiot servants just from, like, the animations they use while running around. So that's good. And then, of course, we've got to get our monstrous hordes. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can get a hideout. I think the hideout, is that going to unlock orcs or, like, what's it going to unlock? Do I have to go, like, all the way down the line? It looks like they also, like, upload it. Oh, we can do, like, faction research, too. Cool. We'll see if we get to that during today's video. I'm treating a lot of the videos this week as, like, bare bones, like, first impressions where I just kind of, like, play the game, shout out the things that I notice. I don't know. I got no voice this week. You know what I mean? You start getting that sandy, raspy feeling in your throat. You're like, eh, you know. I'm gonna do a good job, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a good job inside like certain constraints right now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay, so we've got our barracks knocked on out. It doesn't look like we need to place any kinds of decorations or like beds or anything else, but it looks like we can get nagas and we can get orcs. 
And so we'll go ahead and pick them up. Oh yeah, I remember this from Dungeons 3. Their little beds fill in the area or whatever. I think she does healing if I remember correctly from the first game. Yeah. So I, I seem to recall her being a healer from the first game. Not only to intervene, but also to lend its little snots the impetus they needed by giving them a spirited snap. I also forgot about that. You can like punch your snots in the face. Yeah, you can pick them up. And then I don't remember exactly how you smack them. It used to be like there was like a thing that you held down that put the hand into a slap mode. Oh, you just right click on them. There you go. Yeah, there you go. You give them like a little slap and they work faster. I think you can do it with your warriors and stuff too and it raises their attack speed. Exploring new stuff. However, first, a place had to be found where the evilness could be stored. The absolute evil quickly built a vault of evilness. I will build that vault of evilness because deep down, I'm feeling pretty evil, man. I mean, you can hate on it, but evil always has a better aesthetic than good. It's pretty rare that good ever looks as dope as evil does. Oh, we've already got this lined up down here. Well, maybe we'll wait for that then. It looks like my space for my fantastically dark and evil vault of evil has now been officially completed. So let's go ahead. Now that we have a nook to put it inside of, do I have to research the vault of fantastical evil? It looks like I can afford my vault of evilness now. I'm financially diversified well enough. So we'll go ahead and knock out the vault of evil and we'll sort of just see how that benefits us. But by and large, over the last 20 minutes or so, there's a lot of quality here. Like it definitely appears as though the developers are learning from like previous iterations. And I could have told you that. The first Dungeons game was really bad. Like it was just one of those games that came out and I remember covering it. And it was just not a very good title. Dungeons 2, though, definitely stayed closer to that, bullf uh, that bullfrog blueprint. 3 had it refined down. I know this because I've actually beaten every single Dungeons game. Uh, so I'm actually, I guess, kind of a fan, I, I suppose. And so it definitely feels like they're kind of like picking up the things that previous games did wrong or did right. And just kind of removing or implementing them. Sooner or later, the greedy dwarves would dig their way into the dungeon. The perfidious evil used a workshop to prepare traps to stop the gold-stealing dwarves in their tracks. All right. I don't know if I have enough money to research up to level two. We may have to go dig, like, better veins out here. So what I will consider doing is I don't really mind knocking chunks out of my dungeon walls. It looks like there's a lot of gold up there. So anything that brings in a little bit more cash and I think gets us on the road to like financial evil dungeon independence would probably be a good idea. Luckily, our little snots dig faster than dwarves do. Dwarves in this game dig shockingly slow. I can only assume that now that they've decided to live on the surface with the rest of the do-gooder races, that's really had kind of like a negative effect on their ability to, you know, they've been, they've been drunk a little too much. Yeah, just put the gold inside of there. Save them a trip if you can. Oh, I can vacuum it all up. Cool. Nice. Okay, well, throw it on in there then. Looks good to me. Anything that gets us moving, let's go ahead and we will upgrade right there. And then we've got our workshop on that side. It looks like we've got doors. So we should probably research that as well, if just to keep the draft out. Uh, you guys continue probably hammering away on all this gold. I mean, there's so much money over here. Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's literally inside the walls. And so we've got 750 more cash on its way. However, we're going to need some more locations. Uh-oh. Okay, it was only 200 bucks. I, I didn't know if I was particularly going to have enough money on me to deal with payday properly. Um, what else we got in here? We got a workshop on that side. Let's go ahead and knock out a workshop, I guess. Sounds good to me. It'll sign a whole bunch of little snotlings to go over there and take care of that thing. Well, it looks like some buildings do, in fact, have like a... I guess a set of items you can build inside of them, which explains the spacing right there. It's going to like go around the outside edge, I guess. 
And we'll go ahead and we'll put in the little invention location right there and just kind of see if the toolboxes help out with what it is we're trying to accomplish. Is it possible to just, like, get more snotlings, or do they just, like, show up on their own? I think we just get it by spending money on dungeon upgrades right there. I really like the way, if you look at the little magma veins, I like the way they spread downwards as you further specialize in these trees. That's really cool. I like that a lot. That's actually pretty dope looking. And I guess we'll buy some floor traps just in case the enemy tries to get in. Let's look at this manufacturing animation over here. It's pretty good, dude. I like how it wobbles and bounces. It's definitely got like kind of a World of Warcraft, no Merrigan almost kind of, I guess, levity to it. it. It's definitely like a humorous little animation with the guy running on the hamster wheel. And there's like little valves and flanges that are rattling all over the place. Top, there's pretty good animation work being done by this studio right now. This is pretty good, man. For the next mission, I think we're definitely going to need to have like a bigger engineering room. I don't think there's really going to be any way around it. I need multiple toolboxes being knocked out. Otherwise, it's going to take too long. So I'll probably prep that room right now so that our manufactorum is like ready to roll. I've also placed a few spike traps just in case. Because you never know what these dwarves are going to get up to. So throw... Ooh, I like that build animation right there, too. Honestly, this feels kind of like an improvement. Like, it feels like Dungeons 3, except they've upgraded the graphics. The animation fidelity's looking really good. Okay, boys. Tear this joint to the ground. Dwarves had opened the passage in There you go. I need you here. The more of you that are over here, the better. There we go. Get a healer on him too. Where are the rest of these orcs at? Which meant that they ran through the dungeon with their arms flapping wildly. At the same time, they opened the secret trap hatch so that the tricky evil could give the dwarves a very warm welcome. <laughs> I gotta put my evil inside my little dungeon room. Oh yeah, the spike traps got him. Nice. So these guys are gonna level up. In the first level, they establish that each of your units has kind of like their own XP meter. Uh, they level up. They get stronger. You'll see it when they finish off that dwarf right there. Oh, it didn't. Maybe we haven't researched it yet. In the opening battle of the game in the first level, there was little XP meters on these guys and, like, little plus XPs every time they killed somebody. So it assumes there's going to be some kind of, like, veterancy or leveling up in the RTS part of the game. Did you little honey buns forget your little baby bottles? Or how did you manage to lose to a bunch of lousy orcs? Hmm. But boy, you still have some reinforcements here. Reinforcements? Attack! Obviously, the danger from the dwarves had not yet been neutralized. Luckily, the little snots had made a few traps in their spare time, and they were only too happy to make available to the all-consuming evil. I'm like fine with it. I, I think we just buzzsaw these guys. Oh my goodness, there we go. Buzzsaw hallway. Yes, sir. I really like the idea of having buzzsaw hallways. Put in as many buzzsaw hallways as we can possibly have. I don't really know what these little guys are up to, but like... Oh, they're flamethrowering my little dudes. Gotcha. Yes, walk into the hallway full of buzzsaws. There you go. Get a couple spikes under tow as well. Soften them up a little bit. I'm not super impressed with the damage that we just put out right there. Doesn't look great. I don't know if there's like an alarm mode that I can assign people to either. And we'll go ahead and I don't know what those are. Gnomes? They're tinkerers that craft bombs. Goblins. Okay. Well, grab a little bit of everything, I guess. Maybe upgrade our orcs ever so slightly too. Oh, and it looks like guys will regenerate if I upgrade that thing right there. So that sounds pretty good. I was going to say, you guys are going to want to, like, be a part of protecting the dungeon heart. I don't know if you noticed, but my screen is flashing red, which means you guys are not doing your jobs appropriately. There's the plus XP uh, to protect me from these threats. I think in the first game, you could put, like, guard posts in or something like that, where there's, like, a little flag where your guys would hang out. I don't know how to get that done this time around. 
Oh, there's little secrety secret areas too. This one's got like a little lily pad, I, I guess, pond inside of it. Looks like they can actually walk on the water level too. Yeah, it looks like along the way we're going to occasionally be unearthing things that could be like side objectives. Oop, more dwarves on their way in. Did the thrashers? Oh yeah, the thrashers messed them up pretty good. They had a bad time with the thrashers. These guys are softened up pretty, pretty aggressively. I don't think we killed any of them, but man, they hurting. They definitely ain't feeling good. Then again, when they're equipped with flamethrowers, does it really matter? I like the ragdoll effects they've got in there too. There we go. All better. Just make sure that they're up and out of here. Uh, it wants me to build yet another trap. I have so many traps already, but I can live with There you go. I'll build you another trap right there so that you can be happy, and I can claim every last bit of the evil in this mission. All right, so I've deployed all my units as, like, close to dwarfing stuff as I possibly can. Hopefully... This way, I mean, some of them look like they're just going back to patrolling. But for right now, we gotta wipe the orcs in the dungeon and get rid of all of them. So far, I like it. It feels like it sticks to the formula. It doesn't feel that much different from Dungeons 3. But then again, there weren't that many areas to improve upon in Dungeons 3 either. I remember that being one of those games that actually pretty faithfully reproduced the Dungeon Keeper experience. And I remember playing it all the way through. Like, I binge played it uh, both 2 and 3 when it came to these games. And so I'm excited to see what they're doing with this one right here. Like, I want to get further on in. Obviously, I think the biggest area of advancement is just that they've got a lot more spell effects and a lot more lighting effects and a lot more particle effects. Like, the game is by far the best that the Dungeons Nebulous has ever looked. Oh, there goes another enemy room. Good. If we lose any more units, I'm not really actually that particularly worried about it. I don't think evil overlords care when, like, their units die. It feels like an odd thing, like, you know, being empathetic about one's units. When on a cavalcade of global slaughter, it just sort of feels like one of those things that's unlikely to become important around here. There goes another room right there. We're claiming more territory. We're stealing toolboxes from the enemy. You guys get back into my hand, and I'll put you over here. And then hopefully they'll make a run on that so that we can invade the overworld. And then if you've ever played these games before... So inside the underworld, the game functions like Dungeon Keeper. You don't really have too much direct control over things. But once you get to the overworld, if it's anything like the previous games, it becomes your standard fare, I guess, Warcraft 3 style RTS, where you're controlling your units by rubber band boxes and right clicking and things like that. And so I always found that to be kind of like a nice swap as well. Get that door down, boys. Get that door down. We gotta capture ourselves a dwarf and lift here. All right, dwarvish teleport crystal is on its way out of this world. That's a nice little model right there too, dude. I'll tell you what, it's so interesting to see a developer over the last like nine or eight years uh, go from making a game like Dungeons One that was kind of like a clunky, bad dungeon-defending mess. I guess if you were really into the core gameplay loop, you might have gotten along with Dungeons 1, but I didn't really. I skipped it entirely and just went straight to Dungeons 2. And it's been interesting watching them get more sophisticated with each sequel. Like, the graphics get better, the gameplay gets better, uh, the overall humor gets better. That's another thing, is that, like... You know, there's a campiness to the humor, but they are getting funnier. Like, their comedy writers are getting better for these games. Uh, to where, like, with some of the early games, you know, some of the jokes, you'd be like, oof. You know what I mean? They're very much like Saturday morning cartoon, you know, nine-year-old humor. Whereas, as the games have gone along, they've gotten a lot better at kind of, like, pop culture references. And sort of, like, making fun of other things that are going on in gaming. It's getting a lot more topical, which I like as well. All right. Satisfied, the essence of absolute evil rubs something together that could perhaps pass for two hands together. The all-destroying evil had conquered the exit. This left the way to the surface open for its troops. I need to get some more cash. I'm, like, broke right now. But we do need to go up to the surface level and kind of, like, scout around a little bit. What's this guy want? Oh, it wants me to throw them into the 
wants me to throw them into the portal or whatever so that they come out on the other side. Yeah, I was going to say. All right, let me stock up a little bit of cash. Uh, let me build up my army a little bit, and then we'll go. All right, so my army appears to be ready to go. We've got some orcs. We've got some nagas. We've got, like, a bunch of... We got a goblin, and then we have a gnome. I kind of like the fact that gnomes are evil, but I sort of feel like anybody that played World of Warcraft would understand that a certain type of player was attracted to gnomes, and that even though they were on the Alliance, they were, in fact, quite evil. Evil's creatures blinked a little as they stepped into the glaring light of the sun. Finally... They could lay waste not only to the boring corridors of the dungeon, but also to the lush green meadows of the overworld. It's true, and who doesn't enjoy ravaging the lush green meadows of the overworld? It's a fun thing to do on a Saturday. Man, our damage is not so great. Oh, I do like that the little the little crates and things, inconspicuous crates, they've got X's on them. Are they going to blow up? I bet they blow up. Oh, we're spreading like a, a miasma of evil as well. Look at that. I'm spreading despondence and decay. You guys kind of fall back over here by the healers. I was going to say, don't like run out there and get too wild and crazy just yet. Auto-targeting seems to snap in pretty well. One problem you'll typically run into with games like this is that when you right-click on an enemy, and I see this a lot with indie RTSs, uh, they will only attack the enemy that you told them to right-click. And if they can't get there, they just kind of stand around idiotically. Uh, a thing that I expect from games like this is that if they can't path to the thing that you right-clicked on, there should be some amount of auto-targeting, basically. So they just pick somebody and, like, attack them. Uh, it looks like it takes a couple seconds for them to make that realization, but it's not too bad. And so that's good. Oh, wow, the whole world is, like, on fire. I'm, like, doing bad things around here. I actually feel kind of terrible about it. I don't think I can pick up any more evilness because I think my evilness is full. I have an evilness vault, okay? There's a limit to the amount of evilness that I can harvest. A cage was destroyed and creatures were freed. It's payday. So far, I'm impressed, though. This may indeed be the best Dungeons game yet. I, I, Like I said, I don't really have any problems with the previous two either. Dungeons 2 and Dungeons 3. I played through both of them in one big binge session. I was just super in the mood like four or five years back uh, for a Dungeon Keeper binge. And since Dungeon Keeper is no longer a thing, it's dead. Dungeons was the next closest thing, that and War for the Overworld, and so I did Dungeons, and I knocked out all of them, in fact, except for the first one in like one week or two weeks or something like that, and so I'm glad to see that Dungeons 4 is maintaining that, and they're continuing to improve upon the formula. This feels like a great, worthy successor to Dungeon Keeper, in all honesty, if that's what you're into. I've only played the first two missions, so obviously that's a little bit of an uneducated take, but you're on a First Impressions channel, you know what I mean? If I played the whole game and knocked it out, this would be a review channel. But we got daily uploads and whatnot, so to give you a little taste, I will say that I personally am happy with where this game is at right now, and I'm excited to play it more, and we'll probably be playing it on the day that this video goes live. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and that's about all I've got for you. Bye, folks.